And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed with him a mess of meat from the king. So, so you know what happened there? After David found out about the pregnancy, he said, well, i got to get Uriah back to his house because if she conceives without him being around, it's obviously going to be somebody else's baby. So he was trying to get that man down there to sleep with his wife so it could be said, well, that's Uriah's baby. You know why? Because they didn't have pregnancy, te pregnancy tests back then, Louisa. They didn't have the little thing you could get at the grocery store. They didn't have the little thing you could buy at the pharmacy. They didn't have that. So if the baby was born, it was just, must be that guy's. So what do we have here? A cover up. A cover up. And what I want to show you here is how far sin goes. Mm -hmm. How far it can go. Look at this. Look at it. David sent all that meat, sent that meat after him, that meat offering, like, okay, I'm going to take care of this guy. And Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest not thou from thy journey? Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said unto David, The ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and all the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house and eat and, and drink and lie with my wife as thou livest and as my soul liveth? I will not do this thing. That's a noble fellow, isn't it? King's giving him the opportunity to get out and spend a day at his house. He says, I can't do that. All these soldiers are out here in the field, camped out. I can't go down there and partake like that, knowing that these boys are out here risking their life. That's a man. You know? That's a man of God. That's a man of integrity beyond what we understand. Do you know anybody that would have done that? I don't. Anyway. Everybody would have jumped right on that opportunity to get out of your house and been out to war for however many months. Go down and spend the night with your wife and all the nice meat that David sent. But no, he sleeps on the porch. David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also and tomorrow, and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drink, drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. David got him drunk. That's what we do, see. Cover up. Cover up. But God's good, isn't he? Yes. He knows how to take the lid off of stuff, Courtney. And when we ain't willing to come clean, he knows how to make it clean. Right. Now, I knew at some point in my life I'd need to share that. I just didn't know when. I've had that in me like a champagne bottle for 30 some years. Glad I got to talk to Court on that. Glad you shared those happy moments. All right, verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that Jesus wrote a letter, or David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire him from him that he be smitten and die. Is that unbelievable? 
Is it unthinkable that Uriah the Hittite, such a noble warrior in that in that army, JC, and David was so set on hiding that sin, he's willing to kill that guy. That sounds like something you'd see on one of them documentaries on TV, doesn't it, Michael? Sounds like one of them twisted love triangles you see on TV, doesn't it? But this is how far iniquity can take you. Watch this. This is the scary part. This is how this is how brazen this is. Verse 14. It came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. He wrote in a letter saying, Set Uriah. I already read that. 16. That's what I wanted to see here. Look at this verse 14. Let's read that again. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Put the death warrant in his hand. Put the death warrant in his own hand, Michael. He delivered his own death warrant to Joab. You know why? He couldn't break the seal. Had the king's seal on it. Nobody touched the seals. And in that letter was his death warrant death sentence. David put it in his hands, Bob. Major, isn't it? I mean, that's a major, major deal. Now I ask you a question. Was this a man after God's own heart in that moment? See, I hear people say that all the time, Courtney. Say David was a man after God's own heart, and he blah, 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 blah. He was not pursuing God's heart at that moment. But people use that for an excuse. That man done left off with God, and that's why he did what he could do and how he wanted to do it. That conscience gets quieted first, and then you perform the act. That means God has abandoned the building. He wasn't chasing God's own heart in that moment. He was chasing his five senses. So let that be let that be established in your mind. Because you're going to hear that throughout your life, Jay. Verse 16, and it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valiant men were, and the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approached ye the so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Know ye not that, you, that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerusalem? Somebody. Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall, and he died in Thebes? Why went ye nigh the wall? Then you say, Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. You know what that was all about? This is how bad it was getting in his heart, folks. And he, he was, he, when, he, when Joab was going to send that report, and David was going to say, how come you got so close to that wall and killed folks? And then when he said Joab, or when he said Uriah was, was dead, oh, okay, I got it. That's how hard he got. He didn't care about them men 
until he found out, or he cared about them men, until he found out that that was the way that Uriah was killed. You see, then he didn't care about the other guys. So is this is this a fulfillment of the Hebrew verse that we read? The deceitfulness of sin, a heart being so hard that it could commit heinous acts. <laughs> 